Okay, so far we've talked a fair amount about how AI can sometimes be unpredictable and how context and instructions can keep it on course. And in this lesson, I just want to share something I sometimes use in my own workflow to keep track of what features have been added and to provide just a little bit of extra context to the AI. And that is to use a features markdown file, which I've already created in the roots directory right here called underscore features.md. And inside this file, I've made a table of features that I want to add to this project. And if we view this using the built-in previewer, we can see this nice table with some features inside it. Now it's a lean table with just a few features for a bigger project that would be many more split into different sections. But again, if you don't know how to make a table in Markdown, you could just ask something like ChatGPT to make this for you. However, I would always recommend learning how to use Markdown yourself because it makes it that much easier to edit the files later. Anyway, these are the columns I like to add to the table. A feature ID so I can easily reference them in a chat, a short feature description, uh, details about the feature, about how it should be implemented, and a lot of the time they're more detailed than this right here. And then a final column which can be checked when it's done. And just a quick note on that checked column because I also add a line in the Copilot instructions file that says something along the lines of adding a check to any tasks when you complete them. So as the AI completes each task, it's going to automatically check them off in this list and then I can easily keep track of them. And also for future context, the AI model can see where we're up to. So let's do a little example and see this in action. I'm going to keep open the feature table and I'm going to ask Copilot to complete the tasks one by one from the list. And when we do this, by the way, it's a good idea to add the features file to the context explicitly. All right, so I'm going to add the features list as context. And then I'm going to say, can you complete feature 001 from the features list? And then just to be explicit, I'll say only set up the DB service and not authentication. Sometimes it does do more than you ask it for. So I like to be explicit in telling it don't set this up. Otherwise, it might go ahead and do it. Then I'm going to press enter. And the first thing it wants to do is use this tool from the Superbase MCP server search doc so we can see how to do it. I'm going to allow it to do that. All right, and then it wants to install the dependencies. Again, it wants to apply a migration, so I'll allow it to do that. And it's learned that the table already exists because it created that before. Now it wants to run this tool, list tables, so it can see what tables are in the project. All right, so it looks like it's done it. So. It's created this superbase.ts file to set things up. It's also created this env.local file where we can add our different keys and whatnot. So we'll need to do that in a moment. And I think that's all it's done. Let's have a look. Has it created any other files? No, that's all it's done. Awesome. So I'm just going to keep these now. And then I'm going to grab these values and add them in. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask AI if it can grab these for me. So I'm going to say, can you find the required values for this ENV file from my Superbase project and press enter. OK, so now it wants to run this tool, get project URL. And then it wants to run this one, get a non key. So we'll allow it to do that. All right, so there we go. It's done everything for me. Awesome. And we can also see it's added this little check mark right here next to this first feature. Awesome. All right, so now what I'm going to do is move on to task number two. Again, I'm going to supply this as context right here. And then I'll say, can you complete feature? 002 from the feature list and that is to add a shopping list to Superbase DB and show a success message for five seconds and that's when we click on the save button for a shopping list and um, we tell it to use a reusable custom hook to do this so let's see if it works
Okay, so now it's telling me it's done everything correctly and it's implemented feature 002. So before we accept these changes, I'm gonna just try this out in a browser. So let us just try adding a new item. What else do we want? I don't know, flowers. And then we're gonna add the item. Then we'll save the list, see what happens. We get this notification to say it was saved successfully, but I'm gonna go over to the table and I'm gonna refresh to see if it actually added the item which it did and we can see that shopping list right here awesome so now i'm going to keep all these changes and i'm going to cross off these files and you should see now we have a check mark on feature two awesome and this is all working and you can see how copilot has been using the superbase mcp server to interact with superbase on the back end to do certain things which is pretty cool all right so let's quickly try feature number three what i'm going to do is supply this features list as context again and then i'm going to say can you implement feature 003 and we'll say it should only clear local state not a database record all right so i'm going to press enter Okay, so it says it's done all that. Let's check it out in the browser. And yeah, we can see this button right here. It's not styled 100% correctly, but this is where I might just go into the code myself rather than ask Copilot to iterate on itself and correct this. I probably just edit it myself. I find stuff like that easier to do. So I would clear this list and yeah, it gives me a confirmation, clear the list and it's worked. Let's see if we can add new ones. So I'm gonna say cheese and then we'll add milk again. Let's try saving this list. And it says saved, I'm gonna clear the list. Yep, everything seems to be working. All right, so I think you get the point now. We're just working our way through the list slowly, one task at a time, and it keeps everything focused and stops it spiraling out of control. And again, I would definitely incorporate version control into this, making commits or checking out new branches as I work through the different features with Copilot. And in between features, I would always review the code manually and even make some edits myself if I needed to or wanted to. So this isn't something you have to do or even something that's any kind of official guidance but I do find it helps me a lot when I'm working with Copilot to implement multiple features.